Step back in time millennia ago to the cradle of civilization, to the land of the pharaohs Egypt. Here beneath the relentless sun, an ancient civilization flourished, a civilization steeped in mysticism and grandeur. Life pulsed through the veins of this antiquated society, flowing like the mighty Nile, their life-giving artery. Egyptians, a people both wise and humble, embraced a culture rich in symbolism, where every grain of sand whispered tales of gods and goddesses. Temples, majestic and awe-inspiring, punctuated the landscape, their towering obelisks reaching out to the heavens, a testament to their unwavering devotion. The pantheon of gods was vast, each deity holding dominion over aspects of life and death, love and war. Their influence seeped into the daily lives of the Egyptians, shaping their existence, their decisions made under the watchful eyes of these celestial beings. Among these deities, none shone brighter than Ra, the sun god, the king of all gods. Yet as time passed, the reverence for Ra began to wane among humans. Once they had worshipped him with fervour, their hearts filled with awe and gratitude for the sun god who brought them warmth and light. But complacency, as it so often does, began to creep in. The people of the ancient civilization started to take the blessings of Ra for granted. The sun rose, the sun set, day after day, year after year. The people grew accustomed to the rhythm, the predictability, the constancy. And in this familiarity they found audacity. They began to mock Ra, belittling his power, questioning his supremacy. The reverence that once filled their hearts was replaced with arrogance. They laughed at the sun, they scoffed at its heat, they dismissed its light. Ra, in his celestial abode, watched. He observed their growing insolence, their ungratefulness, their audacity. He witnessed them turn their backs on the very God who gave them life, who nourished their lands, who guided their way. Each scornful laugh, each irreverent word was a dagger to his heart. His disappointment ran deep, his anger flared. These were his creations, his children, yet they dared to mock him. They dared to dismiss his power. The sun god's heart hardened. Enough, he declared, his voice echoing across the heavens and the earth. They must be reminded of their place, they must learn respect. Angered by this insolence, Ra decided to teach mankind a lesson they wouldn't forget. Summoning Sekhmet, the lioness-headed goddess, Ra unleashed her wrath upon the rebellious humans. The fiery desert winds carried with them an omen of impending doom. From the heart of the sun, Sekhmet descended upon the earth. Her lioness head, a symbol of her savage strength and ferocity, struck terror in the hearts of those who dared to defy the divine. Her rampage was as swift as it was devastating. No wall could hold her back, no weapon could harm her. She moved like a sandstorm, engulfing everything in her path. Her roars echoed across the land, a chilling symphony of destruction that signaled the end of defiance. The once vibrant cities of Egypt were consumed by the ferocity of her wrath. The streets, once bustling with life, were now filled with chaos and despair. The once mighty warriors, their hearts filled with courage and pride, fell to their knees in fear. They had challenged the divine and were now paying the price. But it wasn't just the destruction that made Sekhmet fearsome. It was her insatiable thirst for blood. Every drop she spilled fueled her fury even more. She reveled in the carnage, her heart pounding with the rhythm of the chaos she created. She was the embodiment of divine retribution, a force of nature that couldn't be tamed. The people cried out for mercy, their voices lost in the tumult of Sekhmet's rampage. Their pleas echoed through the desolate streets a haunting reminder of their hubris. They had sought to challenge the gods, and now they were paying the ultimate price. The sun set on a land ravaged by a goddess's wrath. The once thriving civilization was now a shadow of its former self, its people living in constant fear of Sekhmet's return. Their world had been turned upside down, their lives changed forever. But Sekhmet's bloodlust was insatiable, and her rampage seemed unstoppable. The people of Egypt were left to wonder, had they provoked the wrath of the gods? Was this the end of their civilization? Or was there a glimmer of hope, a chance for redemption in the face of divine wrath? Only time would tell. Observing the carnage, Ra realized that his punishment had gone too far. The world was teetering on the brink of annihilation, 
and the once vibrant civilization was on the verge of being reduced to mere ashes. The lioness-headed goddess Sekhmet had been unleashed and her bloodlust knew no bounds. In the face of such devastation, Ra, the sun god, the giver and taker of life, found himself in a quandary. His intention had been to teach humanity a lesson, not to obliterate it from existence. It was clear something needed to be done, and fast. Ra, in all his wisdom, devised a plan, a plan so ingenious that even the gods would marvel at its brilliance. He decided to trick Sekhmet to manipulate her insatiable thirst for blood and use it as a means to an end. The sun god ordered his servants to fetch red ochre from the mountains and mix it with beer. The result was a concoction so red, so blood-like, that even the most discerning of eyes would be fooled. The plan was set in motion. This brew was poured into a lake, turning it into a crimson sea that shimmered under the sun's rays. A sight so alluring, so irresistible for the bloodthirsty Sekhmet. And so, Sekhmet arrived at the lake, her eyes gleaming with anticipation, her bloodlust heightened by the sight before her. The lake, she thought, was filled with the very substance she craved, the life essence of those she sought to punish. Without a second thought, she threw herself into the lake, drinking with a fervor that matched her fury. She drank and drank and drank, until the lake was drained dry. Unbeknownst to her, the concoction had a secondary effect. The beer-soaked ochre, mimicking the taste and look of blood, also bore the intoxicating effects of the fermented brew. As Sekhmet drank, she became drowsy, her senses dulled, her ferocity diminished. Eventually, the mighty Sekhmet, the unstoppable force of destruction, succumbed to the effects of the brew. She fell into a deep sleep, her rampage halted, her thirst for blood finally satiated. So ended the reign of terror that Sekhmet had unleashed upon the world. Ra's plan had worked. He had used Sekhmet's own desires against her, tricking her into ending her own rampage. With Sekhmet's thirst quenched, her rampage ended, and mankind was saved. The divine intervention of Ra had not only saved humanity, but also taught us a valuable lesson about the power of ingenuity and the dangers of unchecked rage. In the wake of the destruction, mankind was left to reflect upon their actions. A hush descended upon the land as the once vibrant civilization now lay under the shadow of Sekhmet's wrath. Life as they knew it had forever changed. The once thriving cities were now mere skeletons of their former selves, and the once lively streets bore the scars of the goddess's fury. Yet, amidst the ruins, mankind found resolve. They sought to heal the wounds inflicted by their own arrogance to rebuild their lives from the ashes. Brick by brick, stone by stone, they worked tirelessly, their hearts filled with a newfound respect for the gods. Their actions had brought about their own destruction, a harsh lesson they would never forget. In the face of their suffering, their reverence for Ra was rekindled. They understood now that the Sun God's wrath was not born of cruelty, but of a desire to uphold order and justice. They sought his forgiveness, pouring their hearts into prayers and offerings, hoping to appease the divine. As the days turned into months and the months into years, the civilization slowly rose from its ashes. Their once ruined cities now stood firm, a testament to their resilience and the lessons they had learned. The people found solace in their newfound humility their hearts filled with gratitude for the mercy of the gods. Their disobedience had cost them dearly, but it had also paved the way for a profound transformation. And thus the tale serves as a timeless reminder of the consequences of arrogance and disobedience and the wisdom of respecting those greater than ourselves. The story of Sekhmet's wrath and Ra's mercy echoes through the corridors of time, a poignant reminder that the gods' wisdom is infinite and their justice although sometimes harsh, is always fair. It reminds us that respect for the divine and humility in the face of their wisdom is not just a virtue, but a necessity.